a very popular account both on TikTok and Instagram that has amassed over 17 million followers. Made by a mother with her toddler daughter, at first glance this account seems innocent and wholesome. There are cute videos of the mother and daughter shopping, wearing matching clothes, opening presents on Christmas, and dancing. While this seems like any other family page or vlogging type of account, I would like to emphasize that this only seems wholesome at first glance. Because if you take a second look at these TikTok and Instagram pages, although the Instagram is currently private, despite having nearly 200,000 followers at this point, there are a lot of videos with this four-year-old girl that people find to be very uncomfortable. There have been many videos posted onto these accounts with suggestive tones in them, and it's not a question on if it's attracting the wrong type of people, because it has been proven that it absolutely has. There are dozens of disgusting and inappropriate comments about the four-year-old girl that have been documented online. Many people have voiced their concerns to the mother, Jacqueline, who runs these accounts. But Jacqueline has dismissed these concerns and claimed that those bringing this to her attention were the problem. In her response, she claimed that these concerns were conspiracies and rumors, she claimed that she was being mom-shamed, and much more that we're going to go over today. But to Mimi, all of this happened almost two years ago at this point. Isn't this an old topic? Why why are you bringing it up now? Because it has once again been brought to the public's attention that Jacqueline has not stopped with these videos. To this day, she is still posting them, while there is still concerning evidence that she may be continuing to draw in the wrong audience. And it's very apparent that she lacks the care that she claims to have when it comes to her child's online safety. Today, we are going to dive into the Ren and Jacqueline TikTok account, and this will be one of the most infuriating topics I have covered in a while. This is one of those videos where I apologize in advance if I get enraged. On this channel, we have discussed a lot of different family vloggers. We have talked about influencer parents who push their young children into promoting products to their TikTok following. And we have also talked about creeps on the internet. Now, these are the three most enraging things that I can talk about on my channel. But the person we'll be talking about today seems to check off all three of those boxes, which I would like to imagine might be the first, at least that I remember off the top of my head. Oh my gosh, look how cute you are! Starting things off on a good note to hopefully hold on to happy thoughts while we talk about some not so great things that'll eventually piss myself and everybody watching this off. I love you. You are the best boy. With that being said, we are going to discuss a TikTok account called Ren and Jacqueline. Really Jacqueline, who is a mother of a very young child that she constantly posts on TikTok. Now, over a year ago, she had gotten into controversy regarding this very thing because not only would she post videos of her child to TikTok, many people do, and many people have family content, and many people have the livelihoods made of family vlogging channels, etc. This creator in particular takes things to a level which I have not seen many other people do, especially not with a child as young as the one she has. Last year when she was in a controversy, I don't believe I actually made a full video on her if I've even mentioned her in a video at all. Not only does she film her daughter with matching outfits, doing wholesome things that most people would find cute, but there is also some suspicious content on both her TikTok and Instagram pages that some people might take a little bit differently it's also because she knows about this, addressed it, and now is continuing to do it. What am I talking about? Unfortunately, on the internet, not everybody has the most wholesome intentions when it comes to consuming family content or content that this TikTok account consists of. I'm not going to be posting many clips from this account, and the ones that I will be posting will obviously be blurred out to the best that I can, but the reason why I'm even sparing adding those in is because when it comes to this TikTok account, it's more than just, here's my kid, here's a product, buy the product. It's more than just, I'm a family vlogger that might have some sort of corrupt version of parenting and I'm gonna display it to the world. There are some suggestive things in some of the videos that have concerned a lot of people, especially when digging deeper into their content. There's videos of her toddler that she posts for millions of people to see of her toddler eating 
eating foods that look a little suggestive. And when you're hearing me talk about this, it sounds like, oh, is it really this mother's fault? Or is it just people taking it the wrong way? No, no, a lot of people have addressed this concern. And a lot of people have pointed this out. And a lot of people have also pointed out the fact that on these videos, especially the ones that are a little bit on the more suggestive side, there have been significant increases in the amount of saves that video has. Not hearts or likes, there's an entire separate section of being able to save a video by like favoriting it. And for a while, people have reported that this gave that person who favored the video anonymity. Like the account that posted the video wouldn't be notified that someone favored their video if they hit this button here instead of the heart. And when you watch some of these TikToks, you can see on the side that there is a very high amount of favorites or saves or whatever they're called. That alone, you might say, okay, well, you know, that's creepy, but could that be definitive proof? There's also comments on these videos that are creepy. So I want to give a warning before we get into this segment. We are going to go over some disgusting comments. I am not going to read out loud some of them because they are so bad, and I will obviously be blurring out explicit language. The reason why I find it necessary to go in the details of this is because she pretends to be so blind to proof of this happening. So for Jacqueline, here is some proof. And this is only a fraction of the comments, by the way. There are a plethora of posts on this Reddit page with pages upon pages of screenshots from different people commenting on both her account and fan page accounts, which we'll get into the fan pages in a little bit because that's its own rabbit hole. Ayo, if that kid goes missing, you know where to find it. I can't even read this one out loud. Thanks for the foot pics, screenshots. A moment of silence for her creepy, disgusting comments comment sections on Instagram, I can't imagine what kind of person turns a blind eye to this. My beautiful girl, cheating. What a hottie. I can't read that one. Not that all of these don't make me sick to my stomach, but this one especially does. I hope this person doesn't have kids. That lucky fella who gets even close to the possibility of being Ren's stepdad. What the f is wrong with you? Daddy's love girl? Pages and pages more of comments? More disgusting comments under Ren's 16 missed calls video? People straight up saying sexy and asking if she's single? The most disgusting comment that I saw is one that I don't even feel comfortable putting the screenshot in this video with words redacted. These comments get explicit and vile. And again, what I have just read to you was merely a fraction and they were the more tame comments comments that I saw. Considering the abundance of these comments, I do not for a second believe that she hasn't seen any of these. And if she had seen any of these, why were the alarm bells not going off in her head? This is absolutely repulsive. And again, I don't know how much she actually cares about her daughter's safety. We see her posting these suggestive videos with all of these comments on her TikTok and Instagram before she disabled them and privated her Instagram account. Now, if this were just a regular TikTok account where she wasn't showing off her daughter like a trophy in most of the videos, I wouldn't explain this in the way that I'm about to. I'd say around 90 to 95% of her TikTok content revolves around her daughter, who again is a toddler. When you have a TikTok account, dedicated to your toddler, which by the way, I hate that loophole that so many parents use because toddlers are actually not allowed to have TikTok accounts, but the parents get away with posting them all the time because the TikTok account is in the parent's name. And to be fair, the toddler probably has no idea what's even going on. They just know that their parents are filming them doing random things. I digress. As I was looking through this TikTok account to find as many videos of just Jacqueline that I could find, there is one video she posted without her daughter in it, which is very rare. And this video starts out pretty innocent. She's dancing and just making a funny video, whatever. But then she starts twerking. And the worst part about this is in the caption of that TikTok, she writes, Rin could have done it better. And if you weren't following, that's her daughter. Now I'm trying really hard not to nitpick this because in any other situation, if this were a random TikToker who just posted a video of them dancing and twerking for a second, it would be whatever. But this is a TikTok account dedicated to your toddler and in the description you wrote, your toddler could have done this better. And we're supposed to believe that everything you post with your toddler, especially these suggestive videos, is innocent and that you haven't seen any of these comments and that you have no idea that anything inappropriate is happening. Do you think the people that you're trying to fool are this stupid? There's no war in bossing say for Jacqueline. Also, there was another TikTok that Jacqueline had posted that stated, it's really hard to find an adequate mascara. I need a mascara that works even when I'm upside down or in midair. I find this really peculiar because 
because around the time that this was posted, there was actually a trend going around revolving around the word mascara being a code word for either SA, romantic relationships, or acts. A quick Google search could tell you this, by the way, and this was a very popular trend at the time. And considering that Jacqueline runs a TikTok account with over 17 million followers and that this is no doubt her job, I would imagine that she would be pretty up to date on data analytics and trending topics to make sure that the videos she posts are going to perform well. And since she spends enough time posting so much onto TikTok, I would also imagine that even if she wasn't keeping up to date on all of that, that she would stumble upon this, especially since she made this TikTok worded so strangely if she hadn't. So with all of that being said, before posting this video, I find it highly unlikely that she did not know anything about this trend. I could be wrong since I can't read her mind and I am not her to determine whether or not that is true. That is just my opinion, but going off of the assumption that she did know about this trend, that would mean that she does know how to post suggestive content without making it obvious, as if you really needed more proof. You can chalk this up to speculation if you wish, but I personally do not find this to be a coincidence. Incidents. If you think we're done going over evidence of her knowing what she's doing, you would be wrong. Taking another look through this Reddit page, an interesting post had popped up. This is a screenshot from a now-deleted TikTok by another TikTok family account called Forever Heather. Since this TikTok was deleted, I am unable to see the full video. There is evidence that the TikTok did exist, though, as people in the comments of this Reddit post mentioned commenting on it and even provided the link to it, albeit a broken link now since the video is no longer up, but a link nevertheless. Anyway, Jacqueline appears in this video. It looks like there's some sort of party with other people in the background, and the video description is titled, It Comes With The Territory. People on this Reddit post were saying that they were responding to hate comments, and the comment that Jacqueline seemingly responded to, which is texted above her, says, Stop exploiting your child. Instead of giving you another lecture, I'm just going to read what this commenter stated, which is, publicly broadcasts the fact that she is well aware of the accusations and doesn't give a damn. What a smart lady. Many comments on this thread also mentioned that eventually the creator of this video turned her comments off because of all of the comments they were receiving on the video with criticisms and outrage. And I suppose at some point after the controversy with Jacqueline had started, this person likely deleted their video. There's so much about this that is so concerning to the point where Jacqueline, the mother of this child, Ren, normally I wouldn't say the child's name, but the TikTok account is called Ren and Jacqueline. On this account, the mother addressed everybody's concerns and acknowledged, oh, this is a problem. Well, sort of. While she did address everybody's concerns, she tried to brush it off as rumors. She starts out by stating that she is a single stay-at-home mom trying to make a digital scrapbook of her child. A digital scrapbook that just so happens to have over 17 million followers, but Okay. The past few months have been incredibly distressing, and I've learned a lot. What started out as a hobby to make a digital scrapbook for my daughter, Ren, grew into an interesting role for me as a single stay-at-home mom. Which, first of all, let's be for real, I don't believe this excuse. For one, a lot of the videos she uploads seem to follow trends and are calculated, and for any other reason wouldn't make sense to record your child doing, because I would want to imagine that most parents would want to capture cherished memories, like taking your kids to the park or the zoo, going on trips, having birthdays, milestones like taking their first steps or doing something cute. Not these weird videos videos where she's filming her child eating strangely shaped foods, where she also chooses the thumbnail for each TikTok video before you even click on it. She then states that Ren's safety is her top priority. Ren is my number one priority, and her upbringing and safety are my top job 24 hours a day. Considering the fact that she is still continuing to post content on this TikTok like this an entire year later, almost two years later actually, that really shares how little she cares about her child's safety. Because if she actually cared about the safety of her child, she would not be continuing to do this. Again, it's not that she's just posting pictures or videos. It's the type of pictures and videos that she is posting that have a very suggestive undertone that 
that hundreds of people have found concerning and tried to warn her about. She continues by calling this a conspiracy theory. I'm not sure how this conspiracy theory got started and spiraled out of control. For it to be a conspiracy theory would mean that there wouldn't be proof that it exists. And she does later say, What you need to know is that no law enforcement agencies I conferred with, including the FBI, have found any proof that my daughter's likeness appears on inappropriate websites. These rumors are 100% false. If anyone has real tangible proof, please contact me immediately. She wants proof that there are people who are sending pictures of her daughter to inappropriate websites. But to my knowledge, most people were not concerned about people sending pictures of her daughter to inappropriate websites because nobody would have to go to inappropriate websites to access this content. It doesn't have to be posted on inappropriate websites because you're uploading it directly to TikTok, one of the most accessible apps of the current day. Beyond that, however, before she turned off comments on her videos, there was a lot of proof of people being really creepy in her comment section. Mm. Oh, that's not so much. Mm. So? She also states that her following of over 17 million people consists of a majority female demographic. TikTok analytics show that my followers are 76.8% female. That's more than 13 million females, including lots of moms. As if number one, you can't lie about who you are when you sign up on a TikTok account, but number two, as if being female automatically disqualifies people from potentially being creepy. In other words, it's an extremely poor excuse. What irritates me the most, by the way, is the fact that comments are turned off on this, and I think this is done with a intention to prevent people from further explaining that this doesn't have to be posted on a separate website for people to consume this with bad intentions. What baffles me is that rumor spreaders express such passionate concern for my daughter, yet law enforcement has found zero real proof about these untrue allegations. Creating videos talking about scurrilous rumors that my three-year-old daughter appears on websites isn't proof. Repeating false information over and over will never convert into fact. Doing so is wrongfully smearing my daughter's name and unjustly damaging my reputation. You are making it extremely easy for those types of people to get access to it without going to those websites. She then claims that anybody who expressed concern about this situation is simply mom shaming her, which is absolutely infuriating to even comprehend. If these false rumors have prompted parents to rethink how they let their kids be involved in social media, that is a good thing. Honor and act upon your personal decisions, but please, do not mom shame me because we have different parenting styles. People are very concerned and they're just trying to point out to you, hey, you know, just so you're aware, there are people on this website that don't have the best intentions and the types of videos you're creating with your daughter. They might be catering to that group of people. Instead, she's taking those concerns and treating it as if she is being shunned from the platform and being mistreated. And there are so many accounts out there that post their kids. And while I personally am not a fan of most of them because they are oftentimes done in an exploitative way. This is especially exploitative. She also mentions in this video how she's committed to making changes, but where has the change happened? I look forward to making more videos with my daughter, and I am committed to making changes when I turn my account comments back on. I will filter them to remove offensive comments and report and block accounts as necessary. In my personal opinion, I find this to be worded in a very sneaky way. Using the wording offensive comments sounds very vague, considering the fact that many people know that these offensive comments are more than that. They are disgusting and creepy and predatory. But I personally believe she refrained from using those words because she wants to make it seem less than it is. And when she words it this way, it sounds like those offensive comments are just mean comments. Also, I don't know if she ever turned comments back on after this, right now, all comments are off on all of her videos. All of the comments shown in this video are screenshots from both her TikTok comments and her Instagram comments when her Instagram was public and when comments were still popping up under her TikTok videos. She did mention disabling duets, and I'll tell you why later in this video, because she fails to do so. Online safety precautions that will remain in effect include disabling the ability to download 
or duet our videos. She also mentions disabling the ability to download these videos, but it's still possible to download them. If you want proof of that, you're watching it right now because I downloaded this video from her TikTok account to critique. And another thing is stopping sexual harassment and PDF files. I hate that wording, by the way. She says that that is left for law enforcement. And on one hand, I do agree that law enforcement should be the ones really taking the reins and making sure this type of stuff doesn't happen. A lot of stuff usually falls between the cracks, and this again is just a very poor excuse at dismissing all of the concern and continuing to do what you're doing without any concern at all. Stopping is a job for law enforcement. The TikTok community, including parents, can play an active role in this effort by forwarding real evidence to help the authorities catch the creeps. Let me say it again. If you have real evidence, please contact me. I would do the same for your child. Thanks for listening, and you can read the full version of my statement on my Instagram account, TikTok Rent. So this response by Jacqueline on TikTok was followed up by a multi-page text post on Instagram, which seemed to be posted on August 5th, stating false rumors, what you need to know. The past few months have been incredibly distressing, and I've learned a lot. What started out as a fun hobby to make a digital scrapbook for my daughter, Ren, gradually grew into an interesting role for this single stay-at-home mom. And her upbringing and safety are my top job 24 hours a day. As a busy mom who never set out to become a TikToker with 17 million followers, if you never set out to be one and you think that this is such a humble thing, you could always just delete it, I now realize I should have spent more time reading the comments, which is not so easy with a big audience. I'm not sure how this conspiracy theory got started. Nobody has presented any real evidence. No? No evidence? No evidence of what? It's lacking the statement that you said in the beginning of your TikTok videos so far. There's plenty of evidence of people being creepy in your comments or previously creepy since you have disabled comments and have now privated your Instagram page. And no law enforcement agency I have conferred with has found any proof that my daughter's likeness appears on inappropriate websites either. The wording of either indicates that this was a separate thing to any proof. There is proof of people being creepy. I don't know if there's proof of this being on other websites, but you're already posting this content to a public platform with millions of followers. These rumors are 100% false. What is true? Ren is a happy, healthy three-year-old and has fun joining in when we make our TikTok videos for my account, the account that you uh, pick the thumbnails for and also have her posing in really strange ways for those thumbnails that get lots of saves on certain videos of her. The videos we film the together a couple of hours a week are fun and lighthearted. I am always with her, sometimes on screen or off, and holding the camera as she laughs and giggles, opening boxes, trying new foods, or playing outside. Online safety precautions I've taken include turning off the ability to download or duet my videos. As we've stated, you could still download the videos. It's very easy to download a TikTok video even if the download option is turned off. And again, I don't like why she doesn't disclose why she turned those downloads loads or duets off because if there's no proof of anybody doing anything weird, why would you have to do that? My TikTok analytics show that my account followers are 76.8% female. That's more than 13 million females, including lots of moms, and I am grateful for their interest and support. Just because somebody is a female and a mom does not mean that they are incapable of being creepy. Also, that leaves 4 million other people outside of that demographic. In addition to preserving precious memories, this account has allowed me to raise and provide for my daughter as a stay-at-home mom, along with being able to set aside money for Ren and her future. What also motivates me to keep posting our family videos are the positive comments from the community who say that Ren's personality brings joy to their day and reminds them of their kids who are now all grown up. Where's that motivation now because all of your comments are turned off? I do understand that there are individuals out there with twisted minds and online that prey on children. Never ever did I think that a child eating her first corn dog at the county fair would be interpreted as 
behavior. Listen, this is where it gets on my nerves because first of all, I understand the argument that could be made here, which is the fact that it's the problem of the person viewing this picture and coming to the conclusion that it's inappropriate, not the picture itself, or in this case, a TikTok. And I can understand the concern that someone might have where they might think that this is an innocent type of video and somebody comes along and says, hey, that's a little weird and inappropriate. But the problem is this wasn't a one-time thing and this became very popular very fast and grew rapidly any single time this parent would film her daughter eating and more often would she film videos of her daughter eating very strange things more than just corn dogs more than just bananas and the thumbnails for some of these TikToks would be very coincidentally timed on top of that these videos were the most successful on her channel had the most not just likes but also saves and were also accompanied by very disgusting comments that are still documented to this day. That is what people were concerned with, but she is trying to turn this into the people who are pointing this out are the problem and are coming up with conspiracy theories and their mom shaming me. She's trying really hard to twist this. As false rumors bubbled up in May, a concerned family member reached out to the National Center for Missing and Exploring children. In June, I contacted the FBI to discuss these false claims. The FBI then informed me that no images of my daughter have been found on any inappropriate sites. Again, I don't know if there is or is not any pictures of her kid on any inappropriate websites, but I do know that she's uploading the videos and pictures to a very public platform with over 17 million followers, which is accessible to anybody with a phone. And like I've said multiple times so far in this video, there have been many inappropriate comments on these TikTok talks when comments were still enabled. What baffles me is that these rumor spreaders are online expressing such concern for my daughter, yet not one person has presented real, tangible proof that these allegations are true. There are so many links to screenshots of these comments. There are video clips of people duetting your videos and responding to your videos being inappropriate. I actually have not seen one person mention anything about this being sent to inappropriate websites at least not until you've mentioned it yourself. This whole part of the inappropriate website I feel like is just thrown in here to throw people off because everybody else's concern is the fact that the people who are being creepy are directly on the website you are posting to. Creating videos talking about scurrilous rumors that my three-year-old daughter appears on sites isn't proof. Again, most people are concerned that they're being posted to your 17 million follower TikTok account where anybody has access to them and creepy people have made that very obvious. Repeating false information over and over will never convert into fact and it's wrongfully smearing my daughter's name and unjustly damaging my reputation. My email address is displayed in my TikTok profile. If there is real factual proof out there, please contact me immediately. This ugly situation is a good reminder that you should not believe everything you read on the internet. Well-intentioned people took the time to read chat boards and watch TikTok videos fueled by false rumors and unfortunately assumed it was factual. I want to hear her confirm or deny that all of these comments are true. I want to hear her confirm or deny if she has ever deleted a TikTok comment that looked anything like this. As you say in this post, you shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet. Quite frankly, I don't believe what I'm reading right now. I'm not saying whether whether or not I believe that these are posted onto other websites because I do not know. What I'm saying is I don't believe she is being honest here. I believe she is acting in bad faith to try and smear anybody who has criticized her for posting inappropriate content of her kid on the TikTok and is trying to direct the conversation elsewhere to make herself look like this poor mom who is being shamed for doing this. When in reality, most people are concerned about the videos she's posting on TikTok and the people who are engaging with those videos on TikTok and Instagram too, actually. Conversely, recent reporting conducted by legitimate news organizations clearly and accurately stated in their articles, no evidence of wrongdoing has been found. Did they look at the comments? Did they look at the replies? What I've learned from this ordeal, I am a determined single working mother doing my very best to raise Wren. If these false rumors have promoted parents to rethink how they let their kids be involved in social media, that is a good thing. Honor and act upon your personal decisions 
decisions, but please do not mom shame me because we have different parenting styles. This isn't mom shaming. This is a point where people are disgusted that you have been warned several times about these creeps watching your videos that you post on your platform with 17 million followers and you continue to do so and make excuses and act like it's not happening and turn a blind eye because you would rather get the attention and you would rather get whatever you're receiving from posting these videos of your kid online. And these excuses and playing dumb is absolutely not working. People do not buy it. People do not believe it. You're making yourself look even more disingenuous. My daughter will continue to wear stylish clothes from the mall, wash her hair with shampoo that smells like strawberries, play with her toys, try out new foods, and enjoy special treats at our annual county fair. How blessed am I, a grateful mom that doesn't face off with a picky eater at every meal. Since I first started posting my videos in 2019, they have been well received, characterized as lighthearted and innocent. Yet many months later, once the false rumors started, certain community members went back to scrutinize the videos. They found unwarranted fault in every scene, unfairly characterizing activities such as eating fizzy candy, fruits and vegetables, wearing a swimsuit, and playing with a water balloon as suggestive behavior. Perhaps it's the pickle, popsicle, and corn dog obsessed lewd minds recirculating false accusations that are the problem. I knew it, as I said just a minute ago, she's using that type of situation to twist this into something that is not the case. In this situation, this has happened too many fucking times for this to be a coincidence. This has happened too many fucking times for her to be able to say, oh, the people who are criticizing me are actually the ones that are the problem. There are hundreds of people who are concerned about this. This has been talked about for two years straight now. You have received criticisms and comments and concerns, and this is being twisted into them being the problem and not maybe the content you're posting. People haven't just come up with this because they were uncomfortable by what they were seeing. They were also uncomfortable by the comments left underneath your videos that shared this. They're also uncomfortable by the fact that these particular videos, the categories of which you just mentioned, are the ones that perform the most on your channel and the ones that get the most saves, private saves that are known for not notifying the creator. It is creepy. It is uncomfortable. It's one thing if this happened once or twice and was an innocent thing, but some of these videos are so, so in your face. This is like the Dan Schneider of TikTok moms. I look forward to making more fun videos with my daughter and I am committed to making changes when I turn my account comments back on. I have a feeling that the reason why you haven't turned them back on or have turned them back on and then turned them back off is because there are too many people making inappropriate comments on those videos. There are so many pages and sources that have documented hundreds of these comments on your videos and on your Instagram page. I believe that there is no way you haven't seen at least a few of these comments. I will filter them to remove offensive comments and report and block accounts as necessary. Before you pass it on and potentially spread untrue information online, ask yourself, would you want your child to become the center of an ugly rumor mill? No, and you know the way that I would prevent that? By not making an entire TikTok account with 17 million followers, posting really really uncomfortable videos with them in it. In fact, to be completely honest with you, if I ever do have a kid, they're probably not going to be posted publicly anywhere until they're old enough to do so themselves if they choose. Unaware of turmoil, my daughter is thankfully happy, well-adjusted, and doing great. I'm sure she is. She's fucking four. Hunting as a job for law enforcement. Parents can play an active role in the effort by forwarding facts and evidence to help authorities catch the creeps. For those who have expressed concern for my daughter's online safety, again, if you are in possession of real evidence, please contact me. I would do the same for your child. People have tried to contact you and warn you about the inappropriate comments left on the videos that you have posted on your public platform. It seems like the only way you will take this seriously is if this does end up popping up somewhere on a different website. But you you're posting it on a platform with 17 million followers that is accessible to anybody. So my question is, why would somebody go out of their way to go to a different website when they can go onto your very accessible TikTok account and see the videos there? This isn't rocket science. This is worded in such a disingenuous way. This is twisted to make anybody who is concerned or has criticized her into looking like the problem in the situation when the problem is this mother continuously doing this up to the current day, learning nothing, just disabled comments so she doesn't have to hear or see it, but it's still there. Let me remind you that, bringing out the Italian hand, let me remind you, people are concerned about this because you're making it very accessible so people don't have to go to illegal websites, they're going right to your 
fucking TikTok and Instagram account. And by no means is this the only time I've actually even seen this. I did a video a long time ago, I think like maybe one or two years ago at this point on a app called Likey, where there were creeps commenting on people's posts back then because Likey was like geared towards like a younger audience than TikTok was. And there were a lot of creeps and we talked about that. And they're the same type of fucking comments that you see here. They're the same type of comments. Some of the TikToks uploaded onto this account with this little girl in them have been saved over 300,000 times. Why is that necessary? I'm not saying liked, I'm talking about saves, a completely separate category. And the videos that have more saves are usually the videos, like I said, with more suggestive content than maybe if she were in the background for a second or something else was going on. I find it most interesting that when Jacqueline uploads a video of herself, the amount of saves are significantly lower than when she uploads a video of her daughter. And it's not even like you're taking one video that has maybe 100,000 views and another one that has a million views. Let's compare these two videos that both have over a million likes. One of these videos is of Jack Jacqueline, the other one is of her daughter, and the one with her daughter has significantly more saves than the one with Jacqueline in it. And again, this is just one example. Another YouTuber known as iNabber actually made a video discussing this situation over a year ago, and in his video, he even mentioned that some creators have made fan accounts of this specific TikTok account, and on those fan accounts, even more creepy comments were made. So you now have a TikTok account that has a child between the ages of two and four when all of this has started to the current day. They turned off the comments, but now those videos and pictures are being redistributed to fan accounts, and on those fan accounts where the comments are still active, creepy things are being said under those videos and pictures. But no, nothing creepy is going on. There's been no proof of any predatory things happening here. Right. I don't see a single reason why there needs to be a fan account of a toddler. That's just a little weird to me. If there's a fan account of of her, it's more than likely another adult. There's another video done by Rebzilla, which I will also link in the description below. Since this was actually a situation that started over a year ago, and Jacqueline has removed the ability to comment or make reposts on like TikTok and stuff, it has eliminated the ability to find a lot of the evidence that was once there. So especially these two older videos that were by Repzilla and iNabber, they actually stand the test of time because because now you can't even see her Instagram account, now you can't even see her TikTok duets, and you can't even see the comments on her accounts. It's really good to have these videos still be up to show what was there before she had made this information as hard to find as possible. I don't want to say erased because I don't think it was, I think it's just harder to see now since she has disabled certain things. And the other source that has so many screenshotted comments reposted is Reddit. If you you just type in the TikTok account and then comments on Google, the first thing that'll pop up is a Reddit page with tons and tons of people reposting images of comments that were left on both their Instagram page and TikTok account. Because many people are outraged over the fact that this mother does not believe that there is any proof of this happening. Personally, this is just my opinion. I don't believe that she doesn't believe it's happening. I believe that there is no way she hasn't seen at least some of these comments and is just trying to to play it off like she has no idea what you're talking about. But as Repzilla pointed out in his video on this situation, when duets, which are basically a way for you to make a video response on TikTok and have your face or your video pop up next to somebody else's, so there's two videos on screen, he pointed out that men were duetting videos with really creepy behaviors. Since then, as stated in her video, she has removed the ability to download and duet videos, which which, by the way, I want to let you know that just because you remove the ability to download your videos directly from TikTok, you can still download the videos just in case you weren't aware of that. But as I've mentioned, she is continuing to do this in the current day. This controversy started almost two years ago when Ren was around two years old and now she is four. Concerning videos still pop up on the TikTok account while comments
comments are still currently disabled and while her Instagram is currently privated, which makes no sense to me by the way, if you have an Instagram account with over 200,000 followers, how is that private? She's just making it so that new people can't look at her Instagram and look through the comments and look through her posts, but I digress. Her Instagram is still private right now, her comments are still turned off, but she is still making this content for TikTok, she is still getting millions upon millions of views for her videos with her daughter, and those videos are getting hundreds of thousands of saves, all while so many people are trying to voice their concerns about this situation. She has made it clear that she does not care about people's concerns and will do anything she can to twist the situation into something that vilifies the people who are concerned instead of vilifying the people who are consuming this content for harmful reasons. I'm gonna end the video by saying this. Honestly, I, I don't even think I need to say, like, the majority of people already know how dangerous posting anything online can be. You don't know who is on the other end of the screen. You don't know who is going to be able to see it. If there are any parents out there that might be ignorant to that, please make this your wake-up call to really be careful with what specifically you share regarding your children. That includes any and all types of information and any and all types of videos that could be taken a different way than you might originally think. But in this situation, I don't even think this is that type of parent. There's no way. In my personal opinion, this is a person who knows exactly what they're doing and exploiting that for these types of people because she knows it gets more views and she knows that this gets more content. This is fucking disgusting. This is one of the worst examples of a mom blogger or a mom influencer or whatever you want to call them that I have ever seen in my life. And for everything that has happened over a year ago, it seems like nothing has changed. For example, when looking up information regarding this video, I went to their TikTok and in December of this past year, December 2023, there was a video of her filming her daughter trying different sodas and like, you know, sucking on a straw to try the different sodas. And normally, you know, you wouldn't think anything of it. You're sipping through a straw, right? Well, this video, unlike most of the other videos that might have 2,000 saves, 3,000 saves, had 30,000. There was another one with over 100,000 saves. It's certain types of videos and they all revolve around the daughter. And it's really fucking creepy. It's really f weird. The fact that she doesn't see it and doesn't realize it, I don't believe it. I personally do not believe it. It's impossible at this point, especially since she has addressed it. You can't tell me that she's ignorant to this and have me believe it. There's no way that I do. It's disgusting. And another thing that I really want to mention here is the fact that number one, I know a lot of people, especially after my previous video, are going to say this is the fault of TikTok. This account is not just on TikTok, but Instagram as well. And if you heard me say it in my previous video, you're going to hear me say it again. If TikTok disappears, it's just going to migrate to other their platforms and for this account I definitely see it migrating over to Instagram and I'm willing to bet that if TikTok disappears that'll probably be the only reason why they unprivate that Instagram page unless at the time of recording this video it's only private to remove evidence and then she's going to unprivate it or wait until the backlash dies down. The other thing is I totally understand that parents just want to share their lives and they want to share the lives of their children because they love their children they're proud of their children and that might be one of the best parts of their lives. I do believe that that there are plenty of people out there with wholesome intentions and never want to put their children in any harm's way. But the reality we live in is very dark and the unfortunate truth is not everybody consuming the content that you think is wholesome is doing it with well intentions. As seen documented in today's video, there are plenty of people out there that are very nasty, disgusting, and predatory. And this particular TikTok account seems to be a breeding ground for that. To have all of these comments and to have so many people warning you about what is going on eliminates your ability ability to claim ignorance to this situation. And I'm not saying that you should never post any videos or pictures of your children on your social media. Now, personally, I wouldn't do that on any public social media if I ever have kids, but that's just me. What I would recommend for any parent out there is that if you really, really want to put any videos or pictures of your child onto your social media, number one, maybe consider just posting it on your private social media, nowhere public, somewhere just for your friends and family. Number two, if you still want to post it onto your public social Social media, be very critical with the content that you do post. Look everything over, even if it seems innocent to you. Make sure that there is nothing that anybody can use for malicious intentions. But most importantly, if you do end up posting any pictures or videos of your kids on anywhere that's public, please be mindful of any comments you receive. If you are getting warnings from multiple people saying that, hey, something's going on here, before immediately dismissing it, maybe consider why they are saying that and also be on the lookout for any creepy comments from people 
people with malicious intentions. If you're a parent where you don't care about your child's safety and you just want to exploit them for views online, you're sick. This is sick. This entire situation is disgusting. So yeah. One look at Chester before we go. Sticky woo woo! <gasps> He's a good boy. Thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much to everybody supporting me over on Patreon. And thank you so much to anybody who has given me a super thanks. With that being said, I will see you in the next video. Hey yo, Mr. Handsome Hambone. Hello.